Hello, this is section 4.2, place value or positional value numerical system. Congratulations, you came back and you're doing another section. That's great. Okay, so place value system. We went over that in section 4.1. Just a reminder that the Hindu Arabic system is our system. And in the last section, we learned how to write numbers in expanded form. So I took this example, 576, and wrote it out in expanded form by writing 500 plus 70 plus 6. And then I did 500 as 5 times 100, which then converted to 5 times 10 to the second. And then I did 70 as 70 times 10, or 7, I meant to say 7 times 10. Uh, so that became 7 times 10 to the first. And finally, 6 is 6 times 1 or 6 times 10 to the 0. So uh, what I have boxed off here is expanded form. And uh, just, you know, we basically are recognizing that 576 is 576 because we have made an association with those symbols. And speaking about symbols, the digits that we use over and over again in different place value systems are the values of zero through nine. These are called digits. Notice that 10 is not in there because 10 is a two digit place value numeral. Okay, so a digit has to have just one number. All right, so the oldest known place value system was created by the Babylonians in 2500 BC. So it's very, very old and they used base 60 systems. So they are not base 10. So I just wanna reiterate, they are not base 10, they are base 60. So what does that look like? Well, their one's position is 60 to the zero. Remember, anything raised to zero power is one. Their next place value up is 60 to the first. 60 to the first is 60, so we look out there. And then their next place value is 60 to the second. Well, 60 times 60 is going to be 3,600 or 3,600. 60 to the third is 60 times 60 times 60, which is 216,000. 60 to the fourth is 12,960,000. Okay, 60 to the fifth, this gets really crazy because we have 777. Seven, six with five zeros. Uh, so let's put some commas in there. Okay, I um, actually don't need that last comma, so let me reset. Eek. All right, and then 60 to the sixth, for my calculator, it's too big. So what my calculator did was stuck in 4.665 times 10 uh, E10, which means times the 10th power. So it's pretty crazy. Um, we will not be using these three here when we work with numerals because it gets crazy. Uh, we'll be more so working with like 60 to the third and downward. So that'll help you out. Okay, really quick on your calculator, if you wanna type in, you know, 60 to the fourth, you either have a key that looks like this, like on the graphing calculators, they have this. So how do I do this? I put my base, which is 60, use that caret key and raise it to the fourth power. The other calculator key you might have looks like this, x to the y, or it could say y to the x. So to do the same problem, I would do 60 my base, hit that key that says x to the y, and then you put it into the fourth power. Uh, so just a quick reminder, you will need a calculator. You do not have to have a fancy graphing calculator. You can have a really cheap calculator. And look on the syllabus because I tell you what kind of calculator to get. Um, I will provide some calculators during the testing uh, that are on campus, those two tests. So if you forget yours, you can borrow mine. But I don't have enough for everybody to have one. And you should have your own calculator. So if you don't have a calculator out right now, go get one because you're going to need it, okay? All right, so the reason why these symbols represent the numbers shown is that they uh, used a read. So if we look up above this, do you guys see that we have this little value here? I call that a spike, and it represents the value of one, okay? 
And then I call this guy a boomerang, because that's what it looks like to me. So a boomerang uh, basically represents the number 10. So the reason why these look the way they do is because, remember, the Babylonians didn't have paper. They had clay tablets. So they used a stylus or a reed, and when they stuck the reed into the uh, clay tablet, it made a shape. And they're like, okay, well, that shape looks good. Let's let that represent one. And if I take the shape and put it, the tool on its side, I can make something that's going to represent 10. Okay? All right. So once again, spike is one, boomerang's 10. All right. So there's, it's wise to note two more things. The Babylonians left spaces in between each place value so that we know which one's which. And they also had subtraction. So to do subtraction, they used a symbol that looks like this. So this symbol here implies subtraction. It has a spike with a little baby boomerang going in the opposite direction. Okay, so I just want to point this out. So let's see this in action. Let's look at objective number two. Objective number two deals with how to write a Babylonian number as a Hindu Arabic numeral. So let's look at the first example. So the directions say the same thing, write the Babylonian numeral as a Hindu Arabic numeral. And we have two boomerangs and one, two, three, four spikes. Okay, so I know a boomerang, this value is 10, and I know a spike, this value equals one. Okay, and I also know that there's no spaces in anything else. So I know that the place value is 60 to the zero or the ones right? So I have two boomerangs, so that's 20, plus one, two, three, four spikes. So 20 plus four is 24, and then times one will give me 24. So my grand total is 21, because I'm in the ones position. In example B, I'm also in the ones position, so let's go ahead and write 60 to the zero. Remember, they're base 60, and let's look at what we got here. We have three boomerangs. So once again, uh, each boomerang is a value of 10. So I get 30, and then I have the subtraction sign. So 30 minus a spike, which is one. So 30 minus one is 29 times 60 to the zero. Remember 60 to the zero is one. So 29 times one is 29. Okay, so we got through Example A and B, let's see what else we have. Example C has the same directions, write the Babylonian numeral as a Hindu Arabic numeral. And what we see is we see a spike, then a space, two boomerangs and a spike, then a space, then a boomerang, subtraction sign, and two spikes. So we have place values here. What I'm going to do is draw a line between each one. So I'm going to start with the, the lowest one. The lowest one we know is 60 to the zero. The next one up is 60 to the first. And the next one up is 60 to the second. Okay, so let's translate. Uh, in the 60 to the zero, I have a boomerang, which is 10, a minus sign, and then two spikes. So 10 minus two is eight. So eight times 60 to the zero. This becomes eight times one, which is eight. Okay, let's move our way up. 60 to the first is two boomerangs and a spike. So this is uh, boomerangs, I remember, are 10 apiece. So there's 20 plus one. So 21 times 60 to the first. So this is going to be 21 times 60. And then this next one is just a spike. So it's gonna be one times 60 to the second. Remember, 60 to the second is 3,600. So 1 times 3,600 plus 21 times 60 plus 8. Okay, so let's see what that equals. 3,600 is the first one because 1 times 3,600 is 3,600. And on your calculator, if you take and multiply 21 times 60, you will get 1,260. And then if you take eight times one, well, that's eight. So if I add these three together, 3,600 plus 1,260 plus eight, I get 4,868. 
okay? So by the way, if I'm going through this too fast, remember you can always pause me and then catch up or watch it and then go back and look at it again. Okay, so let's look at D. So D this time around has two place values. And the first place value, or the ones close, the 60 to zero spot, let me just write that out, is two boomerangs subtract three spikes. So boomerangs, remember, are 10, so two of them make 20, minus three spikes, which is three. So I get 17 times 60 to the zero. So this becomes 17 times one, or just 17. Okay. Now, moving up to the next place value, I have a spike and I have a boomerang. Remember, this is a 60 to the first power because I'm one up from it. So I get 10 plus one is 11. 11 times 60 is our next one. So 11 times 60 is 660, and I'm gonna add 17 to that. So when I add these two together, I get 677. Okay, now once again, if you didn't get that, please watch it again and note that we are going up in place values. So remember they're base 60, so their first place value is going to be 60 to the zero, and next one's up 60 to the first, and next one up is 60 to the second, and so on and so forth. All right, so let's look at objective two. Write a Hindu Arabic numeral as a Babylonian numeral. This is a little bit more complicated because Whenever you go from our system, which is Hindu or Arabic, to their system, whether it be Babylonian or a different base, you have to use division. And division is always more confusing or harder than multiplication. Multiplication is what we saw in that last example uh, where we had A, B, C, and D, the ones we just did. So let's check this out. Uh, you're gonna to need to convert from our base, right? Do the division, and then we're gonna to have to translate the digits into Babylonian symbols. Okay, so the first process will require us to divide each uh, base 60 place value until we get to the ones position. This is very important. You have to keep on going until you get down to 60 to the zero. So remember we wrote this out already, 60 to the zero is one, 60 to the first is 60, 60 squared is 3,600 or 3,600, 60 to the third is 216,000. Now I'm gonna skip these because none of the examples go up beyond that, okay? So here are the steps. So you might wanna keep this page out when you're doing your homework until you get used to it. The first one is to write down the value of each positional or each position in the system and find the value that is closest to the Hindu Arabic numeral but does not exceed that numeral. So it doesn't go over it. So we already did that. We wrote out 60 to the zero is one. 60 to the first is 60. 60 to the second is, is 3,600. 60 to the third is 216,000. Step two, you're gonna take whatever that value is and divide it by the numeral that is closest to it but doesn't exceed it. Then you're gonna find the remainder. You're gonna take the remainder and divide that by the next positional value down. Okay, and you're gonna see that in a minute. And then you're gonna go keep on repeating steps two and three until you get to the ones position. At that point, you're gonna take whatever values you got, convert them over into Babylonian numerals, and then you're done. Remember to leave a space between each positional value or each positional place value. Okay, so let's check this out. Here's my first one. Write the numerals as a Babylonian numeral. Okay, so the first step says, hey, write this out. 60 to the zero is one. 60 to the first is 60. 60 to the second is 3,600. Okay, my value is 243. So I cannot divide 243 by 3600 because it's too big. What I can divide 243 by is 60. 60 will divide into that. So that is the closest number in base 60 that'll go into 243. Okay, this is where I start. 
All right, so basically I'm going to have to go until I reach 60 to zero, so let's do this. So 243, divide that by 60. And if you take your calculator and do this, uh, you're gonna find out that 243 divided by 60 is going to be four point something, okay? I don't care about the decimal, I want the whole number because I'm trying to find a, uh, a remainder that is not a decimal. So what I'm gonna do with that, that whole number, the four, the stuff before the decimal, is I'm gonna multiply that by 60. Okay, four times 60 is 240. Now I'm gonna subtract. So 243 minus 240 is three. This is my remainder. I'm going to take that remainder and divide it by the next place value down. Remember, we started with 60 to the first. What's the next place value down? 60 to the zero. Remember, 60 to zero equals one. So how many times does uh, three get divided by one? The answer is three. So how do I represent this? I have to represent the four in the 60 to the first value and 60 to zero have to be a one. So four could be four spikes. Space. One is just one spike. So my answer is four spikes, space, one spike. Because I have to convert those over to the uh, Babylonian numerals. Okay? All right, so let's look at another example. We have 3,600. Well, if we look above, we know that 60 to the zero is one, 60 to the first is 60, and 60 squared is 3,600. Now the next one up would be 60 to the third power, which is 216,000. That's too big. So the value below it, the 3600 is perfect because it's close to, or the closest value to, 60 to the second. So I'm gonna start there. So I'm gonna put a little note on the side that I'm starting with 60 to the second, which is 3600. So I take the number I was given, which is 3,650, I divide it by 3,600, and I find out that goes into it once. So 3,600 times one is 3,600. Then I subtract and I get a remainder of five. Now, I have to take the remainder and divide it by the next place value down. The next place value down is 60 to the first, which is 60. Okay, that doesn't work because five is too small. So I have to put in a place value. So let me go ahead and highlight what we're getting here. I got a zero, right? What's the remainder? Hopefully you said five. So five goes down to the next position of value, which is 60 to the zero, which is one. So one goes into five, five times. So I've highlighted my values and now I have to translate. So one, Zero, five, how do, I, how do I write that out? Uh, one is a spike. Zero we don't have, we don't know how to represent that. But five is five spikes. Okay, so I have my five spikes. I'm just coloring them in to make them look a little nicer. All right, that looks awesome. Okay, so what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm just gonna throw in some lines just to show that that middle space is going to be empty. So I have three positional values, but the middle one's empty. That one's kind of tricky, but I wanted to show you what do I do when I have a zero. All right, so let's look at this next example. It's 12,435. Okay, so remember that I have 60 to the first, or sorry, 60 to the zero is one, 60 to the first is 60, 60 squared, 3,600, and 60 cubed is 216,000. Okay, 216,000 is way too big. So I'm gonna start at 60 squared, and then I have to go up, right? Okay, so I'm gonna put a little note that I have 60 squared here, I'm gonna divide this by 3,600 because that's what 60 squared is. And 12,435 divided by 3,600 is three point something. I keep the three 
I multiply that by 3,600 and I get 10,800. Subtract. What do I get a remainder? I get a remainder of 1,243. Okay, I'm going to take the remainder and divide it by the next place value down. So I already did 60 squared, now I need 60 to the first. 60 to the first is 60. 60 goes into 1,243 20 times. 20 times 60 is 1,200. I subtract and I get 43. Drop a position value, so 60 to the zero. So 60 to the zero is one. The remainder of 43 gets divided by one and that goes into it 43 times. And then you're done because you don't have a remainder left. Okay, so I'm gonna highlight these values because remember I gotta turn these into Babylonian symbols. So I have three, then I have 20, and then I have 43. All right, three, I can represent this as three spikes. 20, I can represent this as uh, two boomerangs. So let me go ahead and color them in. Okay, and then 43 is going to be four boomerangs. Okay, these ones take a little while to draw out. And three spikes. So I think I have the four boomerangs. Let's color this one in really quick. So one, two, three, four, and then three spikes. One, two, three. Okay, I'm just gonna check my answer really quick after I get these filled in. And I have three, that's three spikes, 20 is two boomerangs, and 43 is four boomerangs and three spikes. And here is my answer. And remember, I left space in between them to show that I'm going up a positional value or down, depending on which way you're looking at it. Okay, guys, so a bonus. I don't know if you noticed or not, but those examples, I didn't have to write out uh, subtraction. Um, subtraction you should use for any values over maybe six or seven. So let's say I had the represents 47, and let's say it's in the ones place. So how do I do that? Well, I could use five boomerangs, subtract uh, three from that to get 47. So that's what I would do. So I would do boomerang, boomerang, boomerang. Just make these a little thicker here. One, two, three, four, five, and then use the symbol for subtraction. So remember, it's a spike with a little boomerang on the top going the other direction. And then I would do three. One, two, three. So I just wanted to show you what that looks like if you wanted to use subtraction. So that's what I would do. So five boomerangs and, whoops, I made that worse. Spike, three spikes, okay? All right, so there you go. Uh, there you have it. That is um, the end of 4.2, congrats. So go ahead and upload your notes so that you get credit for them and do the My Math Lab homework covering 4.2.